I'm going to attempt to beat all 150 chess bots, including Magnus, Hikaru, even the max level engine. But before we do that, we need to beat 250 Elo Martin. I started with King's Pawn and tried to get a 4 move checkmate, but sadly he defended it. We both moved our pieces out, and honestly, for a beginner, Martin played very well. Some moves were stupid, but his position was so solid I struggled to break through. However, it seemed a switch got flipped. Okay, well, <laughs> there's the 250 elo kicking in. I then continued to his other rook, and then a knight, and from there, it was just clean up duty until I made a nice mating net and checkmated Martin. Later on, I will fight and destroy Max Carlson, but for now, that's one bot down and 149 more to go. Game 2, I had Wayne, who like Martin, was suspiciously good for 250 elo. I was invading my pieces, but he dropped his knight to d8 to defend the f7 pawn. I would not even do that, and I'm almost 2000 elo higher than him. However, I got a hint when he stopped cheating. Okay. <laughs> From there, it was just mopping the floor of him, capturing basically all of his pieces, chasing him to the other side of the board, and eventually checkmating him. Fabian was my opponent for game 3, who started with the Kadas opening, pawn to h4. Oh my god, he's a genius! But his extreme power was quickly shattered when he blundered his queen on move 5. Uh, there wasn't much competition from there, I just invaded his king through the queen side, and because I never castled, and they played like hot garbage, I checkmated Fambion very quickly. Easily the weakest player so far, but I do appreciate his effort to give me a quick win. Next up, I had Juan, who is now 400 elo, I was moving up the rank steadily, but their opening play was not quite getting better. They played g5, the Borg defense, which I recently rated as the worst response to e4. He did not develop his pieces, and moves king to f7, which is just terrible. Uh, they were extremely unsafe, and as I moved my pieces in, I reaped the rewards. I promoted to a second and queen and soon checkmated Juan into the dirt. Next, Philippe played an English opening and I thought for a split second they were actually going to play well, but then... Okay, free knight. Soon afterwards, I won their rook and was up a monstrous amount of material, so I traded it into an endgame where I was just mopping the floor and cleaning up all of the dust and dirt and grime off of it and then throwing it directly into Philippe's eyes where he brutally died. Game 6, I went against Ilani, who tried using my my own Vienna opening, my, my own son, my own blood against me. Just disgusting. It didn't matter too much though because they then played a Bong Cloud, but despite being such a world-renowned Magnus Carlsen level move, I ended up skewering their queen because of it. They were solid and safe, but I was up so much material, it was simply a match of the waiting game, and I love the waiting game. There really wasn't any hope, I ended up infiltrating and performing a lawn mower checkmate. I know they're not a robot, but I really hope they cried. Game 7, a 550 elo null played in an interesting way. He played as a work of art, but you know how the story goes, he blundered his queen, I became a god janitor, and the game was easy. I even spotted a very nice queen sacrifice as a checkmate. Was it unnecessary? Yes, but was it awesome? More yes. Oliver was my lifelong enemy for game 8, I went with my patented birds opening, which went well. Okay, that's free rook. After that, they opted for the pawn wall of death, but I was up so much material, I was walking on sunshine and didn't even notice. This was another easy game where I just kept on winning pieces, threw them at Oliver until all his wires were disconnecting and being destroyed as he violently passed away. I hope he does not rest in peace. Game 9, I was pitted up against Milica, who went for a Scandinavian, and were actually playing quite well. I mean, they weren't really moving any other piece except for the queen, but they were very solid, so it was difficult to find a way in. But then they started moving the queen a little too much, and we know how that goes. They just completely left it for me to capture, and soon after all their pieces, they graciously donated to me. They even donated their king to me, how generous. Reaching up to 700 elo, there's Janjay, who I tried fried livering, and they played a weird side sideline the Kloss Gambit, I did miss the best move here which would have been d6 to then capture an f7 with the bishop, it was fine though, they donated their bishop which I gratefully accepted, my king side was messed up but they were so unsafe it just didn't matter, I invaded with my pieces, burned their crops, delivered them famine, infected them with disease, 
all the pieces flew off, and I double rook check mated them. Game 11, I fought Aaron, came with the cannons, raided their castle, but they didn't even try. I won their queen for a very nice tactic. Bishop takes on f7. They must capture, and then that's a free queen. You already know the story. They were extremely unsafe. My pieces arrived, and they died. Game 12, I went against Mina and chose my coveted Karakon. They played weirdly and I put on a ski mask and robbed her, first stealing a bishop, then the queen, then a rook, and of such a tight position, they simply just could not survive. I looted their other bishop, they could not run away, and that's a checkmate. Zara marked 850 elo, where the openings were getting a little better, but I mean still, like d3, come on guys, what are we doing here? They probably still could have played a decent game even with that stupid opening, but rather, unsurprisingly, they did not. Free knight, then a queen, and they really just could not survive. Checkmate was so unstoppable, I even had multiple options on where to checkmate, which I like, and I chose the one that also wins a rook to satisfy my inner greed. Santiago was my nemesis for game 14, and I played a black Mardemer Gambit, which I'm not in love with, but I wanted to go with a wide range of openings throughout this video. Honestly, though I was actually kind of struggling here yeah I was probably fine the entire game but so far this was by far the hardest game well until they gave me their knight with a good fork I found ran their king to the queen side gave me their queen and I promptly check made of them last beginner bot is Kareem who went for the Duras gambit which is not a good opening but I suppose is playable I guess although you never guess they played very badly and along with their poor opening choice their king and king side was very quickly a complete mess. I grinded on through, shut their center, and opened up on the G file where the game would be decided. It came to fruition when I achieved a similar sacrifice I had earlier. My bishop was a monster, and although my queen was passed on to a better place, their king passed on to hopefully a worse place. All right, that is all of the beginner bots down, and moving on to the intermediate bots, my next opponent is the 1000 Elo Amir who played D4. Yuck! The good thing about d4 is that you can get extremely solid positions, but Amir did not know about that because he blunders queen on move 8. I swear these players are literally like a lot worse than 250 Elo Marden, or I fell off Elo wise really hard. Anyways, the game was predictable. He blundered his rook. I sacrificed my own rook for a gigantic attack, which paid off when after some calculation, I found a nice way of checkmate. Game 17 against Maxime. The openings are still pretty primitive. Uh, their play is also still in the caveman times. I did have a nice pin against them and won a piece with knight takes on d4 taking advantage of it. I then controlled the center, captured some more pieces, and eventually reached an endgame up a knight and a rook, but I like cleanup duty, so I did not mind at all. Pretty easy from there, I promoted a queen and got a checkmate. Hans was my arch nemesis for game 18 where they played a French defense which went disastrous when they developed their knight and let me capture, destroying their entire king side. My pieces launched cannonballs at their ship and I drowned them out. They just got completely crushed as I attacked, they could not defend, and I won a lot of material. Yeah, I kinda blundered my knight, but my advantage was so monstrously humongous there really was no hope at all. Their king ran all the way into the corner, which just looked really funny. Uh, obviously, they were crushed to death. Next up, I had Z's at 1100 elo, but the openings still are not up to par or really any good at all. F6 is pathetic, and they paid the price. They were extremely unsafe with just about no cover. It should be no surprise my pieces walked right in, and there seriously was no hope, and they were brutally guillotined. Game 20, I got Laura and went for a Scandinavian, and they actually played pretty decently for a while. I was gonna win their queen, but unfortunately, I misclicked. It ended up being fine, though. I won their rook, their bishop, their other rook. It was disgusting. Their king just ran around in a bunch of circles as I promoted and stomped them into the dust. Game 21 is versus Sven, who played knight to f3. Ew. Opening went well, and I got a really strong pawn e3, and immediately tried to punish with queen to f6, but he actually defended pretty well. Unfortunately, though, they were never able to develop their pieces, and their king could not castle, and was just in general extremely unsafe. In trying to spot an attack, I found a crazy tactic. Can I play rook c2? Because if queen captures, I take that rook. King there, check. King has to draw back, check. I think that works. I think that's a crazy tactic. 
all of those moves went through and I got a beautiful checkmate where their queen and rook were completely useless. Game 22 in the gladiator arena, I fought a 1200 elo maria, I went for a french defense and they went for the ortho schnapp gambit which isn't great but when played accurately can be dangerous but predictably they moved their queen out too early and it was just a massive target. I developed all my pieces and kept attacking but she never moved it out of the center. Naturally I went on the attack and won their queen. Game was pretty easy from there, I chased them around and they had nowhere near enough pieces to defend properly so they were forced to run away and promptly got checkmated. Next was Elena, and I tried playing the Accelerated Dragon, and this was the first game where it actually felt challenged. I finished the opening, but so did White, and she started this king side attack, which I saw to be somewhat dangerous and hard to defend against. Luckily, one of their main attacking pieces, their bishop, ventured a little too far into my territory. I trapped it, and because it could not escape, won it pretty fast too. I then reached a bishop up endgame, which definitely took a little conversion version, but with a strong pass pawn and a material advantage, Elena could not keep up. I promoted, they were forced to sacrifice the rook, and the checkmate came pretty soon. Game 24, Wilson was my rival, and we got another Duras Gambit. He played it better than Kareem, but still a very poor opening that landed them a crap position early on. I easily transported my pieces into their kingside, and first one material with a nice fork and f7 of their queen and rook. Now full on pandemic level disaster commenced, they sack their bishop, then their rook, and now we're just left with a puny knight that they also soon lost. A horrible debilitating death soon came their way he happily accepted. Game 25, a 1300 rated Jade was my challenger. I tried playing an Alakine's defense, but considering I haven't played this in like a year, somewhere along the way, I messed up and got a difficult position. She did invade my position and actually win some material, but their fatal flaw was that she was too undeveloped. So when the dust settled, I dominated the center and her uncastled king. I took advantage of her. Not like that. Winning two pieces in the process and reaching a two bishop up endgame, and soon she met at her end. Nelson was the antagonist for game 26 who seemed to like moving their queen out early which did not go well as they just dropped it back right away. I also went for a modern defense which actually panned out pretty well. Admittedly there were some tricks in the position I almost fell for but per usual he gave me a rook which the Volcus Foundation is accepting if you also want to donate one. Like a lot of these bots he avoided castling so when I piled on through it was a calamity for him forcing a queen sacrifice to even survive and they did not last long from there. I kept attacking, ran to the queen side and they were burned to death at the stake. Next game, Vin was a dangerous combatant, starting out with the king's Indian defense, turn Benoni. I got a fine position, but I think Vin was easily better here with just more space, at least until their wires started disconnecting and exploding. He played g4. Maybe they could have pulled through, but then they lost a rook and a bishop, so although they attacked my queen side and then attacked my king, I decided to sacrifice material to reach an easy knight up endgame. I swiftly promoted got a rook up endgame, promoted again, and mated. And I just love mating. Next up, a 1400 David was my foe, and it's good to see openings have not gotten much better. Uh, I don't know what hard drugs David was smoking, or taking, or popping, or whatever, but they were not playing at a 1400 level. Seriously, even 250 Elo Marden was playing much better than this. I moved in on the queen side, won their queen, roasted them, smoked them, and kept on putting the pressure until I achieved a way better position. I was up two rooks, soon a queen two. I did have to be a little careful not to stalemate, but it turned out fine. Ali was the opposition for game 29, where I played a king's gambit, and this was by far the worst I have played so far. Compared to drugged out David, Ali was a god. I went for an ambitious bishop sacrifice on f7, but forgot the only reason these sacrifices are good is because it's against human beings who don't know the best moves. He moves king to g7 where it was surprisingly safe, and they continue to defend well with knight to h5 and counterattack my king. I should have been okay here, but when seeing the rook lining up, I backed my king up and blundered a fork. We now entered an endgame where I was down in exchange, and they could have won easily. But as it was written, he blundered his knight, his rook, and I got to promote and won soon. 
although this was still absolutely my hardest game yet. Game 30, Mateo was my, uh, I need another word for enemy. Adversary. Game 30, Mateo was my adversary, and naturally, considering how tough my previous game was, I went for the England Gambit, which sadly, they did not accept. The contrast is real, he blundered a piece quickly, and soon after, just moved his queen right into the path of my rook. This game had no endgame, I ended them very quickly. So that's all the intermediate bots down, and now onto the advanced bots where things get difficult. Game 31 was versus a 1500 Antonio, and I went for a Karakhan and chose an exotic E5 line. I knew it was very risky, and I paid the price. They gained some pawns, and although I long castled and developed, I had a very tight position where White was doing a great job pressuring me. Luckily, I had an opportunity to break out and took it. Once again, the bot's flaw being they do not castle, which gave me a great attack. This game took a total 180. They could not defend and quickly got checkmated. Next up, I dueled Wendy, not the one from the restaurant, which deeply upset me. I played a Stafford Gambit, but instead of accepting, they sacrificed the knight on f7, which is just a bad move. There was a bit of pressure on my king, but they were never able to use it, and I unleashed a gigantic attack against them, rotated my knight in, one rook, and they panicked and lost their queen. Soon, I completely overwhelmed them, poured water on Wendy's head, causing all the technology to malfunction and explode leading to them dying. Game 33, fighting Pierre, started with this really weird opening. They moved their king to f2, which was just stupid, leading to some calculation and eventually an early tactic that ended up winning me a piece. Game was honestly pretty easy and simple from there. I just traded down to an end game where I dominated and they had no way to fight against me. I promoted to a queen, punched them in the face, knocked them out, picked them up, and tossed them right out the boxing ring. Game 34, I brawled a 1600 Pablo, where we got some type of Italian game, where he went for something called the Newman Gambit. I accepted, defended properly, and was just up a pawn with a better position. I then won a second pawn, a third pawn, and sacrificed a knight to promote, eventually just getting a completely winning position. I then got a second queen, and he soon became a ghost. My opponent was Joel for game 35, starting off knight to f3, and I played a brilliant gambit with e5, which once again, they sadly did not capture. We got into a reversed French defense, where I was just playing badly. This was four hours into a recording, so I just straight up did not see this. Let's move the queen. Oh my god, dude, I'm hallucinating. Yeah, that was uh, pretty bad. On the bright side though, I snuck into their queen side and won their rook with a fork, crawling my way back into the game. Trades happened, I spotted a nice tactic that won me their other rook, arriving at an endgame where I was just crushing. I checkmated Joel pretty fast after that. Game 36 was versus Isabel, and I went for a Leningrad Dutch defense. This got pretty complicated pretty fast because the middle was very tense. I was attacking their king side, they were counter-attacking mine, and a lot was going down. I did secure a material advantage, but they were on the verge of launching such a massive attack. Then I won their rook, and they could have forked me, but pretty simply just didn't, uh, giving me a pretty easy win. With just a puny knight, they could not defend, and my two knights were absolute kings. I even let her promote a queen while I promoted to a third rook just to taunt her. I know she's a robot and all that, but I really, really hope that obliterated her mental state. Next up, a 1700 Arthur played a Scandinavian, where it actually won a piece pretty fast. There was a trade-off though, my king was unsafe, and I really needed to be careful. Like the previous game, Arthur made the poor decision of trading queens, making my my advantage much stronger. I had two knights versus one, soon 2v0 because they were forced to sack it for my past pawn. Game was simple from there, promoted and conducted a king and queen checkmate. Next game, Jonas tried playing a modern defense and I wanted to go on the offensive, so I played a Yugoslav setup with f3, commonly known as one of the most aggressive systems. I really thought I won his queen, but unfortunately it was not the case. Queen there. Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Their queen's trapped. <laughs> Your queen's trapped. Aw, oh, what dude? Come on, man. I traded down into this difficult and grinding endgame where black would attack on the H file and I on the F file. Tensions collided and at the end of the day, 
I had an extra H pawn, which was all I needed. Via that bargaining chip, I pushed and they had a sacrifice to stop me promoting, so now I was simply a knight up with an effortless win from here after an easy promotion. That's Jonas down. Game 39 was against Isla, where we got a queen's gambit. I played one of my favorite systems where I capture c6 and b5. I ended up getting a good but tight position, however it did not stop this game from being very difficult. There wasn't any big event here unlike the other ones though, Isla just kept on fighting, giving me no chances choking me and it really felt like I just could not do anything and was just waiting for death. This went on for an excruciating period of time until some bad trades gave me two connected past pawns on the queen side. I used them to force them to lose their pieces, getting a rook up endgame where I mated pretty quick. Game 40, I played against 1800 Elo Lorenzo, and I tried playing my patented Carol Khan. He went for the dangerous fantasy variation, and this is where I made my first big blunder. First, we reached a position where I was up two pawns, but in return had a worse pawn structure and a lot less development. I did get a great pass pawn and pushed it, and I was fully winning because of it, but then uh, this happened. No! Uh, that's not good. Even watching that again still hurts me, and while it was probably still a draw, I decided to keep on trying. I captured Pawn and now had two passers, whereas White only had one. In the end though, he was forced to sacrifice and I was still able to promote, giving me my closest win by far. Good job Lorenzo, you were a worthy opponent. Next was Wally, where we got off to an exchange Carol Khan. I got an early pawn advantage, but it was such a tight game, it was really hard to actually make a use out of it. Lots of queenside pressure took place and eventually resolved into the entire queenside, just being wide open, maneuvers around, but eventually Wally blundered a knight fork. It took some time to convert to an exchange, but that is another win, albeit difficult. On to Julia, she played the birds opening and I tried the Fromm's Gambit, but they sadly did not accept. She played pretty badly and we got off to some weird Gambit early on, but she then traded Queens. My knight was super powerful and using it I broke through with a very nice pawn to b5. They just could not stop me from promoting and soon I did. The game was extremely easy from there, they panicked and could not do a thing. After I trid my queen down for all their pieces, I got a nice rook and king checkmate. Game 43 was against a 1900 Miguel, and we started off with a Sicilian that quickly transposed into an advanced French defense. Honestly, I kind of rolled them this game. I sacrificed a pawn to infiltrate with my rook on the 7th rank. This gamble paid off when we traded queens, and they quickly blundered a knight. That was already bad, but what was worse was how because of my rook, they could not develop either of their two pieces because of the insane pressure I had on them. They then lost their other knight, I traded our rooks, and from there, it was typical janitor duty, promotion, ring around the rosy, and they are gone. Match 44 is against Xavier, where we got off into a Rui Lopez and from there a Berlin defense. I don't know exactly what happened, but we got gigantic tension in the center where my bishop was attacked, but I was counterattacking them. It all soon settled though, and I got into a pawn up queen rook endgame. This ended tragically for them when they blundered horribly. 45 was against Olga, and I think her whole thing is she's supposed to play the opening terribly and then the rest of the game like a god. In my case though, I completely dominated her after a horrific opening by them. I won two pawns, forced a queen trade, and won their bishop pretty easily. They never recovered the whole game or really put up any fight at all. Middle game easy, end game easy, and the entire win was easy. Next game, however, was against Lee or should I say games, and they did not go well. To keep it short, we played three games and I lost every single one. They had an attacking style and I'm convinced they played an ELO a lot better than 2000 because seriously, I got crushed badly in every single game. It was really, really brutal. So now is the time to unveil my secret weapon. That trick being before the match, set the time to one minute each, a bullet game. Timing the computer out is truly the only way I can win. Maybe you do not agree with it, but my winning criteria is I have those three crowns afterwards, so shut up. For the record, if I use something like have an engine on, which is basically cheating, my crowns would go down. So for me, this really is earning it. Plus, at least against Lee, she uh, deserved it. Oh my
God. So my rule now is for any bot at or above 2000, I'm probably going to use the secret weapon, otherwise I'll play normally. Next, bot Charles with the secret weapon in play, we got a Slav defense where they invaded on my queen side, and although it was a little hairy, I timed them out and they were gone. Next was Fatima where we got off into a Sicilian defense that quickly turned into some type of French tensions and center favored me, I ran them out of time and quickly won. Next up, Manuel who is a 2100, really getting up there now, pretty basic match though, Sicilian again, and they played bishop e6 just giving me a far better structure. I think at the end I may have completely blundered my bishop but they ran out of time so who cares eh, 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 eh. and last one for the advanced section was Oscar got off to some g3 boring garbage which pretty quickly devolved into me moving my knight back and forth to time them out was it a little scummy probably but hey a win's a win and that is all of the advanced bots down time to move on to the masters first up was 2200 gnome where all of that elo goes straight into the sewer when they cannot move fast we got some basic d4 stuff but honestly it doesn't really matter i even captured their bishop for my queen at the end because gnome just cannot do anything this really is easy mode this next game against nora i only gave myself 30 seconds just to see if she could do anything uh she did not it was a pretty easy carol con game uh, okay, maybe I blundered my rook at the end, but nobody cares. I decided to keep experimenting though on how low I could get the time. Up next, I had Ahmed. I'm gonna try going in for only 25 seconds here. And it was actually going quite well until... Oh no. Oh crap. I tried to run away and escape checkmate, but he caught up with me with only a couple seconds on the clock. I then just beat him normally, but I decided to keep on trying. Next up, Sakura. I'm gonna try going in for just 20 seconds. I think I'll have enough time, but honestly, I'm not completely sure. This time it went well. Yeah, I blundered a piece at the end, but I still won. What was concerning was by the end, I had just a few seconds left, which would make my next battle versus 2300 Arjun even more challenging. All right, I'm gonna try doing this one for just uh, 15 seconds. I kind of doubt that I'll actually be able to do it because 15 seconds is really bad, but maybe there's some hope but somehow i actually pulled it off my turtle strategy seemed to go pretty well even if i was just getting completely clobbered at the end what horrifying terrifying thing i noticed though is that by the end i had almost exactly five seconds left so you know what that means all right i'm gonna try a uh, 10 seconds this game I, I don't even know if this is possible to be honest but this is the scientific method i'm going to figure it out my hypothesis um if then statement if I don't, I don't know, I forgot how to do that, but I'm gonna figure it out. I fought Francis, and sadly, it seemed 10 seconds was a little too insane, so I then beat him normally, and the game was pretty basic. I was losing again at the end, but once again, who cares? Next four games were all easy, starting off with Sophia. We got a basic D4 opening. As usual, I blundered both my rooks at the end, but I still won on time. Alexander, despite being 2450, was pretty much a breeze, even though it was a little sketch at the end. Up next, I have Luke. Luke, aka off-brand Daniel Meriditsky, where after an initial game where I forgot to set the timer, I won pretty easily. The next game against Wei was also a breeze, and even though I'm basically losing at the end of all these matches, I am happy. That is all of the master bots down, and now I'm going to head to the creators. My rule is I can only play a bullet match if they are below 2000, so my first match against a 1200 XQC and most of the streamers, I played a normal match. We got off to a center game opening, which isn't horrible, but there's a reason this isn't really played past beginner level. That being, he soon blundered a bishop and a rook. I then got his king into a very dangerous spot, and I probably had a checkmate somewhere along the way, but I still reached a completely dominating endgame, so it was fine. I promoted, and XQC was out of luck. Next up, Mr. Beast, who was 1100, was an easy game. I won a rook quickly with a fork and eventually got into just a completely winning endgame and soon made it. Next, Pokimane, who was 1000, was also a trivial game. I think after the high level bots, these just feel extremely easy. I trapped her bishop early, then got her queen, then went on the attack, then won more material, and then checkmated. Up next was Ludwig, who, despite being 1200, was probably the easiest 
easiest game so far. We traded queens into an endgame, and because of their horrid pawn structure, I set up a mating net that landed me the sweet, sweet checkmate. After Ludwig, I got QT Cinderella, who was 900, and to sum up this game, let me tell you the material counts. On move 7, I had a 15 point material advantage, and move 19, a 32 point advantage. Not too much else to say there, other than I still have no idea how Marden was playing that good at 250 elo. Up next was Box Box, who was 1400, making for a slightly more difficult game, but it was still pretty easy. We got off to a Rui Lopez, I won a piece, traded down to an endgame, pushed and pushed and pushed and promoted and punished. A 600 Harry Mack was my next opponent, a pretty standard game, I won their queen quickly after a Scandinavian, they were super unsafe so I just attacked and ran them around the board until they were dead in the water. Tectone was next, and with 600 elo, actually played quite well. I mean, yeah, they blundered their only two pieces in a row towards the end, but before that, they were playing okay. His king was stuck in the center, and I got a cool central mate. For the next game, I battled I am Christini, or it might be Iam Christini, I'm not sure. They were speaking Spanish, so yeah, I just have no idea. The game was pretty easy. We got a French defense where I ended up winning a piece. No difficulties from there. Turned into a completely winning King Pong endgame, where Christini sadly passed away. Next was 800 Elo Nico, where after I got a fork early in the game was a complete roll. I just kept on capturing, and when they couldn't escape anymore, I took care of them. Up next was a big one, a 2500 Gotham chess, and because they were above 2000, I can make it a bullet match. Despite playing actually really quickly for the first couple of moves, faster than any other bot, I still ended up winning on time. I will claim my medal as the best chess YouTuber now. Next was an 1801 Andrea, our first game did not go so well for me, I tried going on a big kingside attack that backfired pretty quickly, I lost a piece but then gained it back later, we then had a probably drawn rook end game where I tried to make a play and blundered my rook away, we then played a second game which I don't want to talk about. About. A third game also happened where I finally won after getting a very nice early pass pawn on the queen side using my magnificent tripled pawns. I forced her to sacrifice pieces, handing me the win pretty quickly. Her sister came next, 2100 Alexandra, and I used my infamous turtle strategy to garner a pretty quick win. Compared to my other ones, though, by the end I wasn't actually even lost, which is something I guess. Eric was up next, 2600, my highest rated opponent so far, and uh, uh, okay, okay, maybe I was one move away from being checkmated when I won, but I, you know, I win's a win. I see the crowns and I am happy. Despite being literally lower rated, I had a tougher time with Amon, I just kept slipping up and letting him checkmate me, and I don't even want to talk about this. On my fourth match though, I ended up finally clinching the victory. Next up, Anna, and a pretty basic game it was, double fee and kettle setup, to be fair, I was a single move away from being checkmated when I won on time, but that doesn't really matter. Next up, Nemo, basic game, one on time, not super eventful, I really don't know how I can make this super entertaining, well my only strategy is to basically play the same opening every single time. Anna Kramling was next, time won me the game, and to my credit, at the end I was only down 4 points of material, which I mean hey, for me that, that's pretty good. Then I had Sammy next, and because he was 1800 I actually had to play a legitimate match this time, we got a Sicilian defense, I went for an Alpin variation, no offense to him, but I think he may be an idiot for his rating because he blundered his queen on move 10, game was not much of a struggle from there, I just traded pieces, he did have a bishop that kept his position surprisingly solid, but I broke through and mated him fast, which I love doing. After him, I battled a 1300 Nasir, where we started off with an Alakine's defense, I infiltrated with my knight and won a rook with a fork pretty quickly, things did get a little scary with her queen and bishop looking at my king, but luckily I found a way to get out of it and trade everything down so I wasn't threatened. Ended up being a queen up and I scared her to death. Back to the bull games, Canty was up next, double fiend kettle setup once again, my king was safe in the corner and I timed him out. Next, El Deplorable, same setup, my king was kind of stuck in the center, but I timed him out before he could take advantage of me. Bartaz was up next where he got a slightly odd d4 game, I give myself the slightest credit because at the end I was only a single pawn down, which is, hey, you know, that's, that's pretty good. A 900 elo C 
see Dog VA was next in line, where we got some Sword of Avienna Gambit, I got strong Central Control Orion and leveraged it to get a large material advantage, ended with a Rook up endgame where I could have played the rest of it blindfolded and probably would have won. A mysterious 2500 Raid Enigma was next on the chopping block, I had resort to my extremely respectful and sportsmanlike double fiend kind of setup, which ended with me winning on time. 1600 Voiboy was up next, we got an advanced French defense where I actually messed up in the middle game, letting him get a gigantic attack on me early on. I sadly succumbed to the pressure and got checkmated. I then took a nap for like 3 hours and it was back for round 2. In this next game, I then won a bishop, but he got super powerful rooks, he won the piece back where we got a rook versus rook endgame where my powerful passed pawn forced him to sacrifice and I soon checkmated him with my lone rook. For the next game, I fought Hafu, we had a Sicilian that was pretty equal for a while until it infiltrated with my rook and knight where she quickly crumbled. I won her rook and knight and a checkmate came pretty soon after that. 1550 Sardosh was the next one up out of Atlanta where we introduced with some boring Queen's Gambit to climb blah blah blah. Tensions were high though with a very tense middle game. I got an extra pawn but it was hard to fully convert and use it. Although after some trades and such I had two passed pawns and black cannot defend both or force them to kill the their rook, where I killed their king soon afterwards. 1500 Fundy was next, and we got an odd Sicilian with a weird pawn structure going into it. Alright, I might have blundered my knight. In my defense, I forgot I had eyes and just wasn't looking. Luckily, it was fine because I had a super strong passed a pawn that got me a rook up, converted the endgame, and then converted that into a big W. Lastly, for the creators, there was Sonic Fox, who despite being a furry whom I am extremely prejudiced against, is 1750, which is very respectable. They played a Dragon Sicilian, and I got their queen pretty early. It wasn't a complete blowout, though. They did get some decent compensation in return, but it was not enough to completely save them. I brought that queen all the way to the end and checkmated them with it. Alright, so that is all of the creators down in the next 15 are all top players, including Magnus. Hikaru and more. The first one up is 2650 Daniel Narditsky where I opted for the hippo defense, something you're going to be seeing a lot over the next couple games. Uh, my king was unsafe and I was down material but I won on time which honestly is better than I expected so that's a pat on my back. Hikaru was my next opponent and we traded queens very early on and that is always great for me because that's basically a guarantee I cannot be checkmated before I run him out of time. And that's exactly what happened here. The issue was next where I let him get really close and personal to my king early on. Luckily though, we traded, giving me the time out win. 28-20, Kramnik was the enemy for this match and I made a big mistake of letting him infiltrate successfully. I was forced to run my king out and sadly died in the center of the board. Rematch time where I kept him out of my walls long enough to win on time. Next game, Fabiano and I had one of the most baffling experiences I've had so far. Did the bot just pre-move and lose a piece because of it? If I had to take a guess, it was looking at Fabiano's chess.com games, seeing that he would make these pre-moves in bullet matches and attempt to trip the other side up, but it didn't really work here. Either way, it was funny and also a pattern that would continue over some of the next games. Anyways, I ended up winning on time. Ding Loren was up next and we got an exchange Carol Khan where I sacrificed a piece to trade queens, which worked out well, giving me the winner winner chicken dinner. Ian Nepomniachi was my opponent for the next game and good thing I traded queens early because at the end I was down 13 points of material, so not even close. Aronian was the next one where I achieved the pawn wall of death, of which he could not even get close to me and brutally lost. Anish Giri was next to also try to trip me up with the bishop g4 trick. The key was, if I pre-moved e3 like I have in previous games, I would have blundered my queen, but luckily, I didn't. The game was good from there, and there's a small chance I was down a measly 15 points material by the end, but a win is a win. Next game, Wesley So, pretty basic. Yeah, I was down 10 points by the end, but that's pretty much normal by now. Next game was a very big one. 
a 2882 Magnus Carlsen. We got a Sicilian, and I went for my personal favorite, the Alpin Defense, and although I got a worse position, we traded Queens, which is all I need to win because that means I can time him out. As unceremonious as it is, I won on time, only down 4 points of material, which for me is actually really good. Abdusatorov was up next, and we got some type of Vienna, uneventful, let's move on. Bach was up next, another Vienna, this time we got the early endgame line for Queen's trade, so you already know this game was super easy. I did get Morphe up next though with his attacking style of play. First game I was just memeing, so it makes sense I lost. However, I then lost a second time, I lost a third time, and a fourth, and a fifth. I don't know, something about his play just perfectly countered my passive play, but luckily in game 6 I finally came out on top. Lastly for the top players was Vidit, who even though I was up a lot of pieces by the end, I was so safe in the corner that he could not break through before I won on time. So that is the top players down, but it is not the end of the bullet game saga because now we have the chess personalities, majority of which are above 2000. First off is Danny, not too much to say, I'm sorry if these games aren't very exciting but I don't know what to say for the majority of these bullet matches. Next was a Godmator, once again not too much to talk about, timing out with an actual decent position by the end, which is some brownie points for me. Robert was up next where he got a French defense, he got a slightly scary attack, but luckily nothing came of it. Maurice was next, I went for my hippo strategy, maybe I just completely sacrificed my queen at the end, but I see the victory message and I am happy. Kevin was next, I have truly nothing to say about this game. Luisen was next and he played an Alakind's defense, which was actually going in my favor until I blundered my queen, but I did not blunder my clock, which does matter more. Up next was Krikor, double fiend Keto setup, cool, let's move on. Fun Master Mike was my next enemy. Early queen trade led to me being safe enough to just move my pieces around and win on that sweet, sweet clock. Next game, Fiona, and she's the only one here that's below 2000, so I have to play an actual match this time. We got an Alapin Sicilian that was complicated in the middle game. I managed to win a piece, but in return, my king was very unsafe. Luckily, though, I ended up getting through it, winning a lot of pieces, and Lawn Mower checkmating her. And lastly, for the personalities, is Daywood. I just shuffled my king back and forth and won on time. Now we have the athlete and first a 1250 Larry Fitzgerald Jr. where we played a Vienna and from a nice sacrifice I won two pawns early on. From there, I won some more material, and because of his unsafe king, I infiltrated and achieved a nice early checkmate. Afterwards is Jalen Brown, and after some weird F4 opening, I was up upon in the early endgame. I kept putting pressure on him until he just gave up a free knight, converted that into promoting a pawn, and mate came soon afterwards. Gordon Hayward was my next enemy, where I played a Scandinavian defense, and he just kind of gave me a free piece. Uh, I traded that into a bishop up endgame and it was trivial from there, promoted into a queen, and checkmated with the help of my king. Sorry if I blundered his name, my next opponent was Chido by Woozy, and we got a pretty weird position early on where I was up a pawn, but he had the entire center. Luckily, he blundered his bishop, although my king was pretty stranded in the center and it took me a little time, but I ended up converting into just a far better endgame. I then turned that into a nice king and rook checkmate. My next arch nemesis was Christian Polzik, and we got an Italian game where he gave me a bishop on move 5 and then a fork on move 8. I was just up so much material from all of that, even though I lost an exchange, I still was up a knight, which was more than enough to turn this endgame into a winning one. But I then blundered horribly, and he must have done something to me because I blundered again in our rematch. I eventually got a winning position though, and checkmated him pretty early. Daryl Morey was my next opponent at 1550. I went for my classic birds opening, which turned out badly as I was way too unsafe and missed my chance to castle. I then blundered badly, and we went for a rematch, and I forgot to record it, but I got the checkmate. Last for the athletes was Luke.ai, and being his rating, I played a bullet match, double fianchetto setup, you know the usual, and he infiltrated and was completely winning, but did not convert quite fast enough before they ran out of time, clinching me the victory. 
We're now on to the adaptive bots, so depending on how good or bad I'm doing, they'll play better or worse to make the game more equal. Starting with 600 Elo Jimmy, he played a Kuro Khan, I won a Bishop pretty early on with a nice backup. I just pig piled on more and more material until I was up an insane 27 points, and he got checkmated pretty soon after that. Next up, a 900 Elo Nisha made the poor mistake of weakening her king early on by pushing the F pawn. This led to me infiltrating really early on with my queen, knight, and two bishops, leading to me checkmating her in the center of the board on move 13. Tomas was my next adversary at 1200 elo, and we played an advanced French defense. He then gave me a free knight, which I gratefully accepted, and I tried putting pressure on his unsafe king, which proved to be harder than I thought to attack. Eventually, though, I traded and broke through, ending Tomas. 1600 Devin was playing quite well after an initial Fred Liver attack, and even though I was up upon, it was difficult to find any way to push through and make it worth anything. Luckily, he just kind of gave me his rook, which I made good use of to form a strong pass pawn. Even though I lost the exchange back, I ended up promoting and winning the rook, not much of a struggle from there, once bishop and the rook check made it him. Lastly for these adaptive bots was Natasha, and because she was 2000, I cheesed her with a bullet match and won on time. <laughs> Next, we got the coaches starting 400 Elo Danny who went with the absolute genius tortoise opening. I got a large attack and through it won lots of material. On move 18, I was 26 points of material up, and of course, he could not survive much longer after that. 800 Elo May was up next, who proved to not be much better when she gave me a rook. I infiltrated with my rooks, winning her bishop, and eventually getting a single rook up where I delivered a nice checkmate. Dante was my next chess coach who taught me very well, and he taught me three specific things. First, the opening he played was complete garbage. Second, how to pin a queen to a king. And lastly, how to checkmate a king unsafe and naked running on the side of the board. Coach Monica was the next villain in my superhero story, but she left her king way too unsafe, letting me get in there really early and just winning so many pieces. I then won her queen and so little pieces she just cannot defend at all. Lastly, Coach David was 2000 elo, letting me do my respectful strategy of double bishops and timing him out. For the next five, we have the Women's History Month bots, and being the extreme feminist I am, I played like a turtle for all five games. First was Irina Crush, timed her out pretty quick. Afterwards, Kostanuk, and I did the exact same thing and won again. And Amoise Chick was my next enemy, and she went down pretty quick. Who you found was next, and despite how bad my position was at the end, that is another win for me. And lastly, Judah Pulgar, and I did not defend well, and sadly, she checkmated me very quick. It's all good though, I won the game after. I now had the March Murder Mystery Bots first being a damn mate, and uh, I'm sorry I did not record this next part. In that time, I beat 600 Elo Madame Mate, 900 Tina Tempo, 1200 Professor Passant, and 1500 Beatrice Bishop. I did record for 1800 Rummy Rook, where I made a bad mistake, letting my king be undefended. He took advantage and murdered me. Game after though, I dominated him, promoted, and down he went. Nearing the end now, I played OJ a member of the winning team from the 2023 chess clash team it was going well but i blundered my rook isn't over though material was actually equal because i was still up two pawns and when they blundered their rook i quickly promoted to a queen and check made it and finally for the final bot i am playing max the 3200 elo stockfish and of course i'm playing the very respectful and extremely sportsmanlike double fianchetto setup and in the most exciting and riveting turn of events possible, it was relatively uneventful. Yeah, I was unsafe at the end, but I still won on time. Alright, thank you for watching. I know it technically wasn't 150 chess spots, but it was so close and it just sounded so much cleaner. I'm sorry. Anyways, though, this video still took a ton of work. So if you want to support me, like, subscribe, all that stuff, and I will see you next time. Have a great day.